Gingerman Raceway. I love this place. So I had another great weekend racing 24 hours of lemons at uh, Gingerman Raceway. Here's the results by the time Saturday rolled around and at the end of Sunday, check it out, we finished in third place. So that was super exciting, uh, by far the best finish we've ever had. And uh, let's talk about the changes that we did to the car to get us there. If all you want to see is race footage, then right there, you can see there's a link up there for the race footage. I'll release a video at the same time. There's also going to be a link in the description and a card at the end if you want to watch this and then go to that. Um, all right, so changes that happened. Well, first, um, this one change actually happened before the Pittsburgh race but we had never raced Pittsburgh before, so it was hard to draw a good comparison. Um, we added uh, custom struts, strut tops that I made for the front. You can see an image right here. Um, and I also slotted the, uh, the rear struts so that I could add. And, and basically, we ended up at minus 3.7 degrees of camber in the front and minus 2.2, maybe it was minus 2.4, uh, but it was a lot less in the rear. Now. The original intention was to have those be a lot more equal, and for reasons, uh, this is where they ended up at. This is a rear, so I'm running Yokohama A052 tires, and if you talk to a lot of people that run these, these tires are essentially cheat codes. Um, they are so damn sticky it's ridiculous, but they just don't last. And it turns out, with what we've got now, with the minus 3.7 in the front, uh, we're now getting amazing wear in the front. Uh, in fact, the tires, now well, here, here's an inset right here. That was after about four or five hours of practice on Friday, um, about nine hours of racing on Saturday, and then another five hours of racing on Sunday. So roughly 20 hours or so on the tire. And as you can see, it's got plenty of life left. So the ultimate goal of having something that can last 24 hours on the racetrack with one set of tires is pretty much there with the fronts. The rears, on the other hand, um, this is a slightly more complicated problem, but here is a picture of a rear that actually didn't have a problem. As you can see, this really is pretty much done. Um, and that was after, so that one was replaced early Saturday, well, on Saturday morning before the race. So that tire only has 14 hours of racing on it and obviously we're not going to make it through a 24-hour race. Um, I'm going to add more negative camber in the rear, see if we can kind of even out that wear just a little bit more, and hopefully that'll solve it. Uh, also, I have to move the brake bias a little bit more forward now that we're going faster, and hopefully that'll also remove some wear from the rear tires. Which brings us to this guy. So this was only after nine hours of racing, and as you can see, this is a freshly corded tire. Um, that did not have that many miles on it. Uh, what happened is both left side wheel bearings, they got loose. Um, we've run harder than we have ever before. All of the drivers on the team picked up five to eight seconds a lap over their previous <laughs> records. So this was, it was fast and we've never gone for this long. We ended up burning about 120 gallons of gasoline. Uh, normally we burn closer to 80 because Normally what happens is we get a little bit into Saturday and then something happens, usually nothing that brings us, you know, brings us out of the race, but it brings us out of contention for the win. So we just kind of chill and we have a great weekend racing. This one, we decided we were going to push as hard as we could, no matter what. We did get one black flag on Saturday. Um, I don't think it was really deserved, but that's not what I'm here to discuss. Um, but despite that, we kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And as you could saw, as you could see, we finished Saturday in second place and then finished Sunday in third place. So super happy with those results. Um, I don't think the wheel bearings owe me anything. I hadn't replaced them yet. Uh, and I've been racing the car since 2017. They simply hadn't shown any signs of wear. So just left them in there. So before the next race, um, all the wheel bearings will get switched and I probably need to come up with a way to easily bring some spares. Right now I'm thinking probably just bring some spare knuckles with bearings already installed. That way the switch is pretty quick because swapping out a bearing is 
well, time consuming. Um, so other than that, uh, also I tried to put in the double Atkinson motor back in at the beginning of the race because that's really the motor that belongs in the Lemons race car, right? It's a budget motor build. But um, as you can see here, and more importantly, as you can see here, I had finished swapping the motor in, everything was running great. And then I went to do an oil change and I saw that there was a whole bunch of glitter in the oil pan. So the motor came back out and I put the motor in that has the custom aftermarket cams that I made. Uh, these are the ones that are uh, uh, my very custom grind. I mean, that, that ended up being mostly a good thing, right? Because I was able to fully test those some more. Now the downside is that motor makes more power because it gets more air into the motor, whereas the low budget motor makes more power by having more compression in the motor. So this motor actually gets worse fuel economy is technically, even though it makes a little bit better power, it's technically worse for 24 hours of lemons. So I look forward to fixing this and actually putting that double Atkinson motor back in there. Uh, if you're not sure what I'm talking about on the double Atkinson, uh, again, link right there or link in the description on how I built that motor. Other things we changed. Uh, this one is going to come as a bit of a surprise, but we used this exhaust tip. I, when I swapped the motor, I ended up with some issues bleeding the motor for some reason. Um, MR2s are notoriously difficult to bleed. And frankly, I think I'm pretty good at it, but this time it was just getting the better of me. Having to run the car in the shop a lot ended up meaning that for you know four days in a row, I came in at home after afterwards smelling like raw exhaust. I was tired of that. So I took a catalytic converter, I cut it up, I took some inspiration from the rally folks, and I put a V-band and I put it right at the tip of the exhaust. And that was great. Uh, I haven't taken it on the dyno yet. Next time I go to the dyno, I will take this as well as a uh, an empty tip do back-to-back -back comparison to see if we're losing power, but I suspect that we are not losing any power. It certainly didn't feel like we were losing any power. It also does have a neat party trick. Um, if you check this out right here, <laughs> the, the cat, if you run rich, the cat starts glowing, and then any time that smoke would come out of the exhaust, instead it comes out as fire. So, yeah, 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 it's, it's juvenile, but I had a lot of fun. Um, let's see, what else did we change? Um, a long time ago, we added predictive lap times to the car. You can usually see in older videos, there was this tablet in the car that was hooked up via Bluetooth to this Race Capture Pro box. This is really good. There's, I, I really like this, but this is, uh, this is the specifically the Podium Connect one. Um, and if this loses a cell connection, it ends up losing a bunch of data. Um, and then the other thing is you have to deal with, right, this can power on automatically, but this isn't really designed for car use. So for some reason, the application that they have on here, you know, first the tablet has to initialize, then when it initializes, you have to start the app. And for some reason, it always crashes. So after about three minutes, then you have to start the app again. You can't touch this screen with your racing gloves on. So if for some reason this crashes while you're racing, you can't just reach out and restart it. And frankly, it's expensive and it requires a uh, SIM card. What we did for this race is we replaced it with this little guy, uh, race box. This does a lot, a lot less than that does. But it does everything that we use from that thing, which is just predictive times. I, I thought when I bought that race capture that I would use a lot more out of it, and it turns out predictive times is really the only thing we use. This actually has um, a way, way cleaner interface to be able to compare things. Uh, in fact, you can see, eh, kinda, here's a, here's a screenshot from the phone app. Um, you can see it allows you to compare where you're going faster, where you're going slower. And in fact, here, let me zoom into this here, right here. This is part of the reason that we went faster. So I was able to compare very easily where I was losing time over our fast driver on the team, which ended up being about four seconds from best lap to best lap. It was about four seconds faster. And you can see I'm losing it all in corners five and six. 
and I'm losing it because my entry speed is like 10 miles an hour lower. Um, I was able to, that four seconds is actually, after I learned from this, uh, it was closer to seven or eight seconds, so I was able to pick up those seconds. This did, this did its job. Great. Uh, still not perfect, but the other thing, yeah, see, it's not a touch screen. It's got four discrete buttons. Great for when you're wearing race gloves. Um, now, this still had, this still had some issues that it wasn't perfect. Um, if somebody knows a better predictive timer than this, I'm, I'm all ears. And I really am looking for something like this where it's dedicated hardware, uh, phone mounts and whatnot, right? Again, that brings us to touch screens. And I, cell phones in the car, just you've got battery issues, you've got charging issues, you've got vibration issues. I, I don't, I wanna stay away from mounting a cell phone in the car. So if somebody knows something better, please point it out. Um, if you do want this, uh, it's pretty easy. Just search Racebox on the internet. But if you want, there's a link in the description. that will bring you right to Amazon where I bought it from. And uh, back to these cams a little bit. Uh, we had the rev limiter set to 7,600 RPM. And as you can see in this footage right here, we ended up figuring out that the front straight, it was actually much faster to just avoid the shift entirely, just feather against the red line. And we're doing that from the start finish line all the way to corner one. Uh, and there's a couple other spots on the track where we ended up just feathering it right at the red line. I'm super happy with these cams, the profile, and the 7600 RPM rev limiter I've got set right now for racing. I have tested these all the way to 8600. Um, the power obviously keeps dropping, but it's still technically worthwhile because there's more power there than if you shift. But I haven't had the... Uh, I haven't had the testicular fortitude yet to raise the rev limiter from 7600 on the track. So for now, 7600 is the tested limit. Uh, other than that, yeah, enjoy the footage. Um, right here, you can see this is a link to the next video, which is just racing footage. Have fun. Bye.